Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. I guess we might call this the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion because, well, even though we don't have a hurricane yet, we do have this area down here, Invest Area 90E for Eastern Pacific, well on its way to becoming a tropical depression, so I wanted to post a video discussion to talk about it, mainly because later on in the period, it looks like it could have an impact on this area of Central America, maybe Southeast Mexico. We'll have to wait and see for now. Still uh, probably just an hour or so, maybe less away, that this will be upgraded. I'm recording this at about 4.25 p.m. Eastern Time on the ninth day of May. Still six days ahead of the uh, traditional start of the Eastern Pacific hurricane season. But there it is, 90% chance of developing, so this will be a little early, the earliest on record, but yeah, so what? It's just one of those interesting anomalies. Um, it, for me, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, this is around 90 degrees longitude, which is roughly where New Orleans is. And you know, if it wasn't for the uh, strip of land here that we call Central America and Mexico, you know, this is in the ballpark of you know a good part of the Western Hemisphere here, that only a landmass separates it from the Atlantic Basin. So it tells me that this part of the world, or at least our area of interest, and not so much over here, but you know, that it's prime, it's ready. So to me, that's the bigger story here for now. Uh, and once this develops, we'll see where it goes. And like I said, it may have some impacts uh, on parts of Central America. I'll cover that in a moment. First, the satellite presentation, clear rotation with this system as it's uh, spinning in those counterclockwise bands coming in towards a developing low pressure center located somewhere in here and it'll just continue to do that and eventually become the first tropical depression of the season in the eastern pacific this is what the vorticity signature looks like i like to use the 850 millibar level about 5,000 feet in the atmosphere and what i like to look for is the amount of roundness and bundling of energy vorticity is spin in the atmosphere. And you know, you see these features up here over Canada, for example. These are pockets of energy and vorticity in the atmosphere, but they're spread out linearly over a longer area. Whereas a tropical cyclone like we have developing here is going to bundle that energy around a common center, and in this case a warm core center. And so this shows me that it is indeed fairly healthy and will become the season's first depression more than likely and uh, probably going to become a hurricane to be honest with you it is situated in an area of upper level favorable winds aloft this clockwise flow in the atmosphere or what we call an anticyclone aloft so that's favorable we don't have winds cutting across it like this shearing it to where the system itself is going this way and the winds are cutting across it we don't have that instead it has this favorable exhaust pattern, if you will, and that's going to allow it to develop as well as taking advantage of some ocean heat content. This is our scale over here on the right. Obviously, the higher values are at the top, and the Caribbean Sea is the warmest area in the Western Hemisphere right now. But, you know, our system almost depression is located in here, roughly. And the ocean heat content is at the bottom of the scale, or at least the lower third but there is enough there to take advantage of. Probably going to move towards these higher values over the next few days right here. So that's going to add more juice, more energy in the atmosphere for it to develop. And I won't be surprised one bit if this becomes the first hurricane of the Eastern Pacific season. So get ready. And again, you folks in Central America, maybe Southeast Mexico, as the GFS ensembles from the 12Z run today, there it is. Uh, these are the different ensemble members. You get your operational run, your deterministic run, and then you have these ensemble members. You know, the same model run with different variables to give you a different output. Everything is just slightly changed. It's very complex, probably difficult to explain how they do it, but you get an idea. Well, maybe if this happens, then what happens with the track? And you run that, in this case, uh, roughly 20 times the euro i believe has 51 ensemble members and so you know you would have a lot more and you try to get an idea of what the model is quote unquote thinking through a lot of different variables instead of just one deterministic run if that makes sense so you kind of look at the envelope here 
And it's, you know, for the next few days, let's just focus on this. I think it's pretty obvious that a path off to the northwest will ensue and stay the course. After that, probably going to try to turn off more towards the east as the heights collapse over here and it's able to sort of turn that corner and maybe head towards Central America. We're going to have to watch this very closely. This is likely more than five days down the road, so we have some time to watch it. Uh, speaking of the deterministic runs, this is the GFS from this morning, the 12Z, or 12 UTC initialization. And again, this is the 5,000 foot level in the atmosphere. There it is, represented by this green blob. They used to have a different color scheme, but they changed it. And you see over the next few days, it gets more and more organized with time moving across here. More and more vorticity concentrating around that center, showing me in this particular run that it is definitely trying to organize throughout the period. And if we move up through uh, the five-day time frame right there, there's day five. And you can see it's trying to get close to the Gulf of Tehuantepec here. And it might just try to come around and turn the corner. You've got this ridge sitting up here in the atmosphere. And that probably is going to move on out of the picture, allowing this to gain more latitude and maybe even lose some longitude moving back towards the east. That's what would happen. So, yeah, you folks in Central America, keep an eye on this. Hurricane Adrian wouldn't surprise me at all. So I'll be on top of it. I'll put posts on the HurricaneTrack.com page in blog format and then these video discussions for you each day as we track the first interesting specimen of the season, so to speak, right? And uh, we'll see what happens with it. Uh, definitely going to be a rainmaker as it rounds the corner there, but at least, again, we have a few days to watch it. All righty, well, that is it from me for this afternoon. I am Mark Sedeth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thank you, as always, for tuning in, and I'll have another video discussion posted for you tomorrow.